Presenting portrait style images in a landscape slideshow has never been very pleasing to the eye. If I just press play on the mini player here, I think we can have a demonstration why. Here we have an image filling the screen, it's going to be followed by a portrait format. For a start, if we're using the dissolve transition, that doesn't look too appealing, and of course we're left with those huge black areas left and right. And of course when the image appears on screen, it touches the top of the screen and the bottom. And while that's okay when we've got a full screen landscape, it just doesn't look very nice here. Using a few simple techniques in Pictures to Exe, I think we can improve on this presentation a thousand percent. In the file list above, I've set aside a few images to enable me to demonstrate both picture-in-picture -picture static and picture-in-picture -picture animated a little bit later on. I've got six landscape style images here. They've all been cropped to 16:9 aspect ratio to match the aspect ratio of the slideshow I'm making. But if you look down here, you'll see that the pixel value is a little bit greater than the standard 1920 or 1080, and that just gives me a little bit of scope for animation later. But when we start to use portrait format or aspect ratio images, they don't lend themselves very well to a 16:9 aspect ratio crop. So what I'm using here are images straight from my digital SLR. And these are 3.2 images, but you'll find they'll fit into our slideshow pretty well. And just for a little bit of variety, I've added one square image too. The picture in picture technique gets most of its charm from the fact that we can have the images coming up over a standard image like any one of these or we can have them coming up over a blurred image whether we blur the image in pictures to exe which we can do or whether we shoot one specifically for the task again all personal choices then we need to decide do we want the portrait images to come up one at a time one two and then three all three together the two outside ones and then the center one, you can see we have choices here too. What I'm going to suggest is that we remove this soft image and we'll use this image here to bring three images together over the top of this particular one. Now I want to make a copy of this image. I can hit Control C, Control V, but to be honest, it's just as quick to drag down another version. The reason I want two copies is because this image I want the viewers to see as it is, but then I want this image to fade into a blurred version of this one, and it's this one where the inset portrait images will appear. So let's select the second of the two and open up the objects and animations screen. Now what I'm going to do with my picture in picture, which is going to be my background, with the keyframe selected, I'm going to go to the blur option. I'm just going to blur this a little bit. I may drag this just a little bit bigger so that I lose that little bit of ghost in around the edge. We won't notice that when one dissolves to the other. But if you look down into the timeline here, you can see we don't have a great deal of time for anything to be done. So perhaps we ought to just give some thought to the slide duration. Let me just pop back out of here and into the slide list once again. Now we could carefully try to plan the length of the slide duration we need here, but what we're creating is nothing that's too difficult. So why don't we just put a value of something like 12 seconds in here, go back to the objects and animation screen, and as we begin to put things together, we'll decide how close we are with that guesstimate of 12 seconds. So let's go and get those three images. I'm going to click into the grey area to lose the bounding box around the background. 
go to the add an image icon and I can select all three images together so let's select those three as the three insets and I'll open those. As soon as they open on screen if you look over on the right you can see things start to get a little bit confusing because I've labeled all of the images so similar that it's very difficult to tell one from another. Well there is a way we can deal with this for example if I select the bottom image of the set that's the background. If I go to my properties I can change the name of that. It's not going to change the name permanently in the other window or a permanent change of the image it's just here so we can work a bit more efficiently. We could change the names of these but we're not entirely sure where we're going to locate them just yet. What I can do though is select all three. Using the control key select all three of those inset images and also using the control key all three of the keyframes at the start because the first thing I want to do is to try to work out the size that I need these images so that all three will fit together side by side. So if I go to my animation tab I'm going to put my cursor just place it in the zoom box and if I use my down arrow I can reduce the size of the image and you can see I'm reducing the size of all three together to 85% now just taking a quick look at the size or the width of that and looking to the left and the right have I made that small enough so that we can slide one to the left one to the right and get a nice spread well I'm going to give it a try I'm going to just select one of those for the moment and I'm going to use my pan X here and just drag it to the left I'll select this one and I'll use my pan X and drag it to the right. Now you can see I'm probably a little bit lean on the size. I've probably got them marginally too big. But I can easily fix that. Just reselect them and the three keyframes. And I could drop that down to 80. But now I need to position them correctly. Am I happy with where they're coming up? Well, this one could go on the outside edge this one would be nice in the middle so let's change things around let's move that one to there and the other one let's straighten that up I just rotated that and I didn't mean to what I want is the one underneath I'll select it from here and I'll just move that to the left so now you can see we can position these and I'm doing that just roughly for a moment doesn't look too bad this one here we know needs to be absolutely central so if we double click the Y and the X we can sort of form up on that one so what do we want to do with these this one needs to be about there that there when I select this one the Y value needs to be zero it's only changed marginally because I've been dragging them about so double click the Y but the X is 66 that doesn't look too bad but I'm going to put my cursor there and just use the down arrow just to move it a little bit to the left I'm looking at the gap here and the gap there 65 looks good when we select this one we can double click the Y again because we know we need zero and if we've got 65 here then what we need here is minus 65 we've almost got it let's just type that in there we know we've got all of those images nicely spaced on the background. Before we go any further let's give those three inset images just a little bit of style. I'm going to select all three of them on the right hand side, go to my properties tab, tick the border. I'm going to put a thickness in there of about four pixels. We have to be a bit careful here because we're not sure how 4 pixels is going to be viewed unless we look at a full screen preview because we're only looking at this at 50% size so sometimes until we get a feel for this if you bring the image up to 100% at least you've got a better idea here of the thickness of that line so it gives you the opportunity if you wish to actually increase that thickness but I think that's going to look reasonably okay and of course 
nothing's cast in stone here we can always go back and change these later and I'm going to put a standard shadow on all three of these as well so already if I click the screen you can see they're looking pretty nice what I'm going to do next is select all three of those inset images again and also all three of the keyframes because we've got to decide when these images appear and how they appear I'm going to keep this simple and we're going to fade them on screen which means at the first keyframe here we need to go to the animation tab and we need to take the opacity off so when this background image appears soft over three seconds when do we want these images to start to appear well I reckon we could possibly get away with two seconds but let's try three and I can put them exactly at three if I want to by putting that value in the keyframe time what I need next then is a keyframe for each of those inset images to tell them to come back to full intensity I'm going to use the clone here so I'm going to hit alt insert click down here alt insert and it will always clone the previous keyframe alt insert so here I can select all three of those as well and say well if we want them to fade up over three seconds then six seconds is the value we need there three seconds to six and at the six second point we need all of those images nicely on view what we need to do at this point is to come out of the objects and animation screen and have a look in the mini player but I would suggest if you were doing this do a full screen preview now I'll start just before this so we get a good feel for what we're doing unfortunately I can't record a video of this nature and also do a full screen preview but we may get away with watching this in the mini player now straight away that little bit of movement in the background I found I didn't like too much now this is not an uncommon thing whenever we do creative work some things are going to work some things aren't so in this case I'm going back to my objects and animation screen I'm going to identify my background and where I give it a very small amount of zoom I'm going to click double click the X to reset it because I want to have another look at that I'll start from that point this time so we've got this picture now fading into softness and then the inset pictures appear now of course if we was putting this together in a real life slideshow we would have music to consider but for demo purposes I'm avoiding that so we may need to make some slight changes to how long these images take to appear on screen and even when they start to appear on screen but that's quite quick and easy to do and in fact because it's quick it does give us the opportunity to try some variables such as let's select this one and go back to the objects and animation screen one of the beauties of pictures to XE these days is we can select all of the keyframes together if I select the first one and hold the shift key and select the last one I've got them all selected together so I could drag these back to that point and have a quick look and see if I like that a little bit better than what I saw a few moments ago doesn't look too bad at all does it but I've just changed things again and I've actually started to bring up those three inset images halfway through the two second fade on screen so already I've had three different ways I can bring these images on screen and we need to use personal preference I guess to decide which one suits us so bringing you back into the objects and animation screen you can see where I positioned the keyframes prior to that last little test and I think it works in all three positions so I think it's going to be more of a personal choice than any direct right or wrong but we do need to give some thought to the slide duration here and of course we would need to take 
the music or the soundtrack into account. But if we've got three images and those three images are fading up to be fully on screen by the four second point, if those images remained on screen to view for four seconds that gives us eight and then we've got two seconds to fade off which could give us ten seconds as a slide duration. So if we wished we could test this but we do have the scope to drop down that slide duration to ten seconds and we can tweak it to match the music fairly easily. One last little test here from this point We'll press play, not forgetting of course when you're doing this work, save a project file regularly. There's the blurred image and the three insets come up nicely. And they leave the screen, they don't seem to be on screen too long and they don't seem to be rushed either. But it's the music that's going to determine when this image brings the insets to a close.